to bless the Lord. How many are ready to bless the Lord this morning? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've come to bless the Lord. Come on, now clap your hands all over this place. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, I want you to clap your hands, everybody. Oh, I need some praises. You can do better than that.
Come on, I need y'all to help me. Here we go. Hallelujah. Somebody just worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Yes. Truly, there is nothing like the presence of the Lord. Yes. The word of God declares that in his presence there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. This morning, I invite you to get into his presence this morning. Get out from the outer courts and get into the most holy place. Hallelujah. The Bible said that in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah said, I saw the Lord. And he was high and lifted up. And his strength, hallelujah, filled the temple. I don't know about you this morning. I don't know what you may be going through, but I encourage you. Get into his presence this morning. Let your worship go above whatever you're, wor whatever you're experiencing in your life this morning. Whatever sorrow, whatever pain you're experiencing, let your worship elevate you into his presence. Because I guarantee your worship will bring the change that you need in your life. Yeah. 
Whatever it is you are you seeking the Lord for this morning. Allow his presence to make the difference in it for you. Come on, just lift your hands and worship him, somebody. Come on, lift your hands and give God the fruit of your lips. Come on, open your mouth and worship him. Come on, I'm not asking you to worship me or worship or a bishop or a pastor. I'm asking you to lift holy hands to the King of Kings. Worship the Lord of Lords this morning, the sovereign God, the creator of the universe, the one that gave you life this morning, the one that breathes breath into your mouth this morning. If you have a reason to praise him, but this is your reason, the fact that you have hands that you can lift this morning. You're not in the hospital room this morning. You're not in the grave this morning. He said, if you won't praise me, I will cause the rocks to cry out. I dare you to open your mouth and give him your best this morning. Give him what is due unto him. Hallelujah. He is worthy of it. He's not asking you for it because he's El Shaddai. He's the omnipotent God. He is the savior. He is the redeemer. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He is the creator. He is the I am that I am. Because when no one is someone you could swear by none other, he says I am that I am. Come and worship him this morning. Get beyond yourself this morning. Get beyond yourself this morning and see him for who he is. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. We bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord, yes, we do. We worship you, yes, we do, hallelujah. Mm. Here I am again, face to face with you. Your spirit welcomes me to worship at your feet. I don't ask a thing, I just bring my offering, Lord, I'm hoping you'll be pleased as I go to my knees in the essence of your presence. That's where I long to be. I don't know about you right now. With my head and heart bow down, I'm crying, oh. Right now, I don't ask a thing. 
Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. Come on, church. Come on. Come on. You can do better than that. Come on and praise him. Come on and worship him. Come on and magnify him in this house. Come on and glory in his presence. We glory in your presence, Jesus. Come on and worship him. presence of God. Have you ever noticed when the atmosphere begins to shift, you might be at home in prayer, or you might be here in service, and you can feel a shift taking place in the atmosphere, and so quickly our, our flesh wants to get out of it because our flesh can't glory in the presence of God. And that's there that you have to crucify your flesh and you have to make your flesh come under subjection and say, you will bow down in the presence of my king. 
You will not be fed in the presence of my, you need to stand back to your feet this morning and declare there's nothing like the presence of God. And I'm not going to let flesh stop me. I'm not going to let my flesh get between me and my God.
last week how many experienced the release this week uh huh because I understand that when you receive revelation of the word of God and then you apply the revelation work the revelation look at your neighbor and say it's time to work the revelation you've got to work the revelation you know what Nike says says just do it you got to just do it. Don't, don't think because you got a Nike swoosh that you're a good hockey player. I remember playing ice hockey with a dude. He came out, boy, everybody on the team wanted him. When we were in the dressing room, he was Nike down. He had the Nike gloves and the, and the, the skates. He had the helmet. He had everything Nike. And we were all looking at him like, oh, he's on my team. He's on my team. That dude stepped on the ice, fell flat on his back. And we laughed and laughed, and I got a sermon out of it. Just because you dress the part don't mean you are the part. You've got to work the revelation. Come on, you got to work the revelation. My job is to give you revelation. Your job is to work what you got. Ooh. So in a quick review, I'm just going to give you the two scriptures, John 14 and 12 and Luke 16 and 11 that we hit last week, but then I'm going to give you the scripture where we're going today. Jesus was teaching the disciples. John 14 and 12, he said, Truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing. Not only will they do the works that I've been doing, but they will do greater works. Someone say greater works. Why? Because I'm going to the Father. He said, don't be impressed with this because you're going to do greater works. How is it that we can do greater works than Jesus? I'll tell you why. Because Jesus was one man. We are many. Are you seeing? So, so Jesus said, I'm the only one out here doing stuff right now. But I'm going back to the Father and I'm going to send you a helper. Woo! And you're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And now every one of you are going to receive power. Somebody say power. And suddenly, when they were in one place, in one accord, cloven tongues as of fire 
fell upon them. And they received power. Somebody say power. So Jesus taught them in John 14. He said, truly I tell you, whoever believes in me, you're not to be impressed by the works that I'm doing because you're going to do these works and greater. But then in Luke 16 and 11, he says, but if you have not been faithful in handling worldly wealth, a.k.a. money, who will trust you with true riches? So we talked last week about Jesus. He's desiring to invest or deposit into his disciples true riches. Someone say true riches. How many are ready for true riches? He said, what are, what are the true riches? He said, uh, the authority that, that I have. If you can walk in that authority, you have true riches. He was saying, I want you to go out into the highways and byways, and I want you to write spiritual checks with your mouth. And I want you to sign the check, not with your name, because you're not qualified to cash it. But I want you to sign the check in my name. That's why when we pray, we always finish our prayer with, in Jesus' name. That's God telling us, don't sign it in your name, because your name's not good, but, but my name is good. Any check that you write, God said, I can cash it. If you walk in true riches, authority, you will have authority to lay hands on the sick. That's true riches. You'll have authority to, to lay hands on blinded eyes and watch them open. Somebody say that's true riches. True riches. You, you'll have authority to speak in unknown tongues. You, you'll have the authority to, to heal the brokenhearted and to, to set those that are bound free. You, you'll be able to restore those who have been wounded and to deliver those who have been oppressed. You will have the ability to trample upon serpents and scorpions and they shall not harm you. Someone say true riches. Uh, he said, but the problem we have is that you can't be trusted. Because you're not handling worldly wealth properly. Mm. Somebody say release. Let's get into relief part two. Luke 16.10 says, Whoever can be trusted with little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with little will also be dishonest with much. Before you see that, I need you to look at three people and tell them, it's time to handle your business. Come on, touch three people, look at them, tell them, it's time to handle your business. Come on, you got to handle your business. That's right, handle your business. Go ahead and sit down at this time. It's time to handle your business. Are, are y'all hearing me? This is, this is part two of the series, Mind Over Matter series, but this is part two of Release. If you want the release of heaven, if you want the release of true riches into your life, the way to gain true release is to handle your business. Whew, thank you. That's what I'm waiting on. Uh, we're, we're, what I've learned is that, is that we as the church, we've been, we've been bottlenecking a spiritual move of God because of the way we're handling the natural affairs of this world. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 46. The Bible says that the spiritual did not come first, but the natural did. And after that, the spiritual followed. So the first man, Adam, was the natural man. The second man, Adam, spiritual. Come on, y'all, talk to me. So, so let me give you a little protocol to prosperity. We, we broke it down last week, and I, I pray that I got you to believe and understand that, that when I'm talking about prosperity, it's not only talking about money. How many believe that prosperity is much greater than money? The scripture we used last week, it said that I desire that you would prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. God wants you to prosper. He's, he's really saying it happens in the natural, 
and then it transitions in the spirit. He, he taught them, he said, if you build wineskins, I'll fill them. Mm. If you seek, you will find. If you knock, the door will be open. If you ask, it shall be given. Are you, are you seeing the pattern here, the, the protocol? He said, if you do things in the natural, there's, there's a natural requirement for a God answer. If you, if you start in the natural, it will manifest in the spirit. That's why the Bible says, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be. Are you still with me? Somebody shall natural first. You got to pray for it in the natural and watch it move things in the spirit. I told my kids often, I said, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, you, you think you're at the age where daddy can no longer tell you what to do. When I was young, I realized that when, when kids are young, they keep you on your toes, but when they get old, they keep you on your knees. And I told my son, don't you ever think that you go so far that daddy can't get you. Because if I don't know where you're at at 3 in the morning, I know somebody who knows where you're at. And I've learned and realized that I can pull some strings in the spirit. Are y'all hearing me? I can pull strings in the spirit wherever you're at. If you got a bottle to your mouth, I'll pray you get sick and start vomiting right where you are. Oh, y'all ain't trying to talk to me. You go ahead and mess around in the things of the world. I'll pull strings. In How many are ready to pull strings in the spirit? If you are not able to pull strings in the spirit, it's because you have bottlenecked the good things. Are you still with me? Uh huh. Don't bottleneck the good things. So let me get back to the text. So, so, so God has put within your hands a test. Do you remember we talked about that test last week? And, and the way you respond to this moment will determine whether or not you get the real stuff. Mm -hmm. Did my wife not tell you that, that when I got home, she broke me down on how I broke her down? We got home, she's like, honey, man, you preached and, and conviction hit me. <laughs> now that's saying something when your spouse gets a revelation of something you're saying. She broke me down by telling me that and then broke me down by saying, we got to give more. Why? Because in the natural, I'm thinking, God, I'm doing what I was required. But what do you do when, when God requires more than he requires? Okay, that, this is what you're talking about when the Bible says deep calleth unto deep. I'm not talking to everybody right there. That was just to somebody. What do you do when God requires more than he requires? If you can equate God requiring more than he requires, it's because God is about to put something on you that he's not about to put on everybody else. Are y'all still with me? See, it's all in perception. It's all in the way you're receiving it. When To whom much is given, much is, when God is requiring more of you, it's because he's trying to get more to you. Mm. So, so my wife said, honey, we got to do more. And so we did more. And within 24 hours of doing more, something that was locked up for 20 weeks was released instantly. Within 24 hours, boom, released. And what did we do? We could have said, it's about time. We should have delivered those things 18 weeks ago. Come on, that's what some of us do. Doggone doors should have been in. Delaying our project. But no, what did we do? God, I thank you. I thank you for giving me revelation so that I can work the revelation so that I know that I can pull strings in the spirit. Because when things aren't happening and manifesting in the natural, I don't have to fight it naturally, but I can go in the spirit and say, God, you're in control. God, I've done what you've required me to do. Now, God, I need you to step in. And when you have the ability to call on God, are y'all still hearing me? When you have that kind of ability, God will open supernatural doors. But the doors are not open until you first prove that you can handle your business. Look at your neighbor and say, are you handling your business? Huh. Genesis 1, 
verse 26 through 28. It says, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over all the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female, he created them. Then God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Let me put a pen in it right there before I go any further. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Did you all catch that revelation right there? What did he say? What was he saying? He said, stop trying to multiply things that are not fruitful. Okay. <laughs> you got to learn to read the word sometimes forward and backward. Because some of us, let me, let me break it down for you. Don't try and franchise something that's failing. Did that make sense to anybody? The Bible said be fruitful, then multiply. Don't you have seven kids if you can't handle, okay, that's it. Let me, let me get back because y'all are going to have me rabbit trailing. <laughs> to all, okay, forget it. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. What he was giving them was a dominion mandate. For those of you that are taking notes, you need to write that down. God has given me a dominion mandate. You really, I believe that every person, every household here today and streaming in should write that down. God has given you a dominion mandate. If I ask you next week what I said this week and you can't remind me, then chances are you're stuck, you're bottlenecking God's power, and you'll never get beyond it. Why? Because you came to church without a pen. Because you just want a bishop to preach you happy. Come on, bishop, give me my fix, give me my fix. Oh, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You, you, come for, you come for the pusher. See, some of y'all look at me like a pastor pusher. Bishop, give me my fix. Give me my, I just need a high, Bishop. I just, I just need something that'll, that'll make me feel good for a moment. And then when you come back down, you'll be calling to your pusher and say, hey, pusher, can we get another hookup? But I'm tired of giving people a hookup. I'm trying to give you something that will sustain you so you'll never have to depend on me. Are y'all still hearing me? So you need to write that down, put it in your phone, do something, but you need to write that down that God has given you a dominion mandate. Mm, it's imperative that you get that. Because that was God's original plan for Adam. And you know what I've learned? Is that God's plan never changed. There are several ways in the Bible in which blessing comes. Several ways in the Bible in which prosperity comes. Number one, I can pronounce a blessing over you. That's called the spoken blessing. I can, I can, I can speak to you after service and say, may the Lord uh, bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and, and, and be gracious unto you. May he establish you. And give you peace. That's the spoken blessing. And I believe in the power of the spoken blessing. Do you all believe in it? Amen. You must believe in it. That's why you come up for prayer. Because you believe that when you're going through a struggle that Bishop has the power to speak and to break a curse off you. You believe, you believe that Bishop has enough power in his mouth to release a change and it will change your atmosphere. It will change your marriage. It will change your situation because you believe in the spoken blessing. Someone say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. To, to, to bless means to speak well of. For in your tongue is the power of life and death. And it's time to speak well of things that you've been cursing. 
Why? Because you can destroy a curse that's operating in someone's life. You can release a blessing to operate in someone's life just by the words you speak out of your mouth. So, number one, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give you some prosperity principles. Principle number one, release the power that's in your mouth. Write that down. It's time to release the power that's in your mouth. If you can't write it down, at least say it. Release the power that's in your mouth. Proverbs 18, 21 says that the power of life and death is in your tongue. Your, your words are like miracle grow to faith and belief. Are you hearing me? Don't tell me you believe a thing, but you don't speak a thing. Don't tell me you believe that God's going to turn your situation around and you not speak and have it turned around. If you don't like the atmosphere that you're in, talk to it. Come on. If you don't like your spouse, <laughs> don't change them. Just talk to them. <laughs> don't, don't, don't cash them in. Change them. Are you hearing me? My wife, I'm telling you the truth. My wife prayed over me. I can't tell you how many times. I can't tell you how many times she slapped holy oil on me while I was asleep. I'm down at BC Border Bars backing it up. Come home, lay my head down on a pillow. Oil all over the side of my I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> my wife anointing me. Don't you tell me it don't work. Speak in those things which are not as though they were. Are you, are you still with me? Ladies, don't you ever tell a man that he's a failure. Because the more you tell him he's a failure, the more he will fail for you. Come on. Don't you tear down a man or a woman and then come to the man of God for counsel on how your man is a buster. If all he does is play video games, you need to go in there while he's playing video games and start speaking life to him and say, I believe that the greatness will come out of you in the name of Jesus. I believe that you are going to be the breadwinner of this house. I believe that God's about to not give you a job but give you a career. Are y'all still talking to me? But what do we do? We'll go in the room and say, you dirty, no good for nothing, low down, so-and-so. I'm, I'm ready to get real. I'm so sick and tired of you. Come on, y'all. I did. <laughs> and Ron said, you met my wife, I see. <laughs> I hope your wife is streaming in right now. I pray. I pray, Mrs. Coates, I pray you heard that. But, but, but listen, if you don't like the way your children are acting, speak to it. If you don't like the way your ex is acting with your children, Oh, you thought your ex has the power to hold your children back from you? I'm, I'm talking to somebody in here. I'm telling you right now, you can pull strings in the spirit. Mm, speak to them. When's the last time you spoke to your wallet? And it gets quiet. I'm going to give somebody right now, I'm going I'm to pause and give you 15 seconds to pull out your purse, pull out your wallet, pull out your checkbook, do something, and speak to it. And talk positive to it. Do you understand that they did a scientific test and they said that people that spoke to plants, plants were more prosperous and more fruitful? Do you understand that? Do you know why? Because you were made in the image of God. And because God was a kind of God that created through the words of his mouth, when he spoke into darkness and said, let there be light, light manifested and darkness had to go. Then he said, and I made you in my image and in my likeness. Therefore, because I have the ability to speak and bring about change, you too have the ability to speak and bring about change. And so I'm going to challenge somebody right now. If you need more money in your life, you need to talk to your wallet right now and speak into that thing in the name of you. You will prosper. Come on. You will be blessed. I will have more increases coming to you. Go ahead. I know it looks crazy. Bishop, that's some crazy stuff. It ain't no more crazy than God telling a man to go down and dip seven times. 
That's some crazy stuff, Bishop. It ain't no more crazy than a blind man coming to Jesus and said, I need to be healed. Jesus spit in the dirt, made mud, put it on his eyes. Yeah. Somebody say, he put it on me. He put it on me. He spit in the dirt and made mud and put it on his eyes. You all know why he spit in the dirt and made mud? He spit in the dirt because spit holds DNA. Uh, DNA of what? Of God. He spit in the dirt because the dirt had the DNA of heaven. But why did he spit in the dirt? Because the man had the DNA of dirt. Because man was created of the dirt. So God said, I'm going to take it back to the beginning. Because your problem is not here. Your problem was there. So I'm going to go all the way back there, and I'm going to create this thing all over again. So I'll take up my DNA, spit into your DNA, slap the two together. Now go and sin no more. Are you all hearing me? Somebody give God a praise right there. That was totally not on my notes. That's free. I won't even charge you for that. Somebody say, speak to it. Speak to it. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go and throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done. If any one of you goes to the mountain, are we talking about the Rockies? I got to make sure that everybody's on the same page. I didn't tell you to go to British Columbia, look for the Rockies and say, I'm going to test this thing. Get down and go into the sea. No. He said, if you speak to your mountain, what he's saying is, if you have a mountain in your life that you can't overcome, if you've got something active in your life that you've been believing for breakthrough, you've been believing for turnaround, but you can't seem to make any uh, ground on this thing, he said, that's a mountain in your life. What I'm doing is I'm trying to get you to activate something that I put on the inside of you. I put creative power on the inside of you, and I want you to speak to the thing that's in front of you. Speak to the thing that's hindering you. Speak to the thing that has halted you. Speak to the thing that you can't see a way around. You can't see a way over. You can't see a way under. I want you to speak to it. Don't try and go around it. Speak to it. Listen, never approach your mountain with your mouth closed. This is why it makes no sense to me that, that I have to come to church and prompt and prime you to shout in church. People come to church quiet. Why? Because society has taught you to be quiet. Shh. I'm telling you right now that the power of life and death it's, in your it's not in your brawn. It's not in your muscle. It's not in your stamina. Your power is in your mouth. And the devil has silenced the church for long enough. How many are ready to call some stuff back? How many are ready to tear down some strongholds? How many are ready to slap the devil around? How many are ready to bring some things back? Come on. Some of y'all need to push some things away and bring some things back in. Are y'all hearing me? I dare you right now for about five seconds to open your mouth. I dare you to open your mouth and call back what has been stolen. Call back what has been taken. Come on. You better open your mouth and give God a praise right now. My God, my God. He said, don't you dare go to your mountain with your mouth closed. He said, you can tell your mountain to jump in the lake. You need to tell whatever's holding you back, go jump in the lake. Not in my name, but in God's name. In the name of Jesus. That's what I'm talking about, Bruce. In the name of Jesus. Why? Because every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess the sound of the name of Jesus 
has power over devils. The sound of the name of Jesus has power over sickness. The sound of the name of Jesus has power. Oh, you're not hearing me, church. How many got power? It's in your mouth. I dare you to open your mouth right now. Call on the name of Jesus, and he shall step in. Somebody shout Jesus. If you're on the stream, I challenge you in your living room to call on the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's salvation in the name of Jesus. Bishop, I don't want to say that name. Well, then stay stuck. I'm not preaching to those who are here to stay stuck. I'm preaching you free. I'm not trying to preach you happy. I'm trying to preach you free. I'm trying to give you the truth of the word of God so that your wineskins can handle what God is trying to give. Our wineskins have become so brittle. Huh? Brittle. God said, I can't deposit in that. Old wineskins. Religion. You're too religious. I can't use that. You can't handle what I've given you. Are y'all hearing me? You can't handle what God wants. How many are ready to handle what God wants to give? Huh. He said, if you speak it and believe what you spoke. Now, now, now that's paramount that you get that. It's one thing to speak it. It's another thing to believe it. So what do you do when you got a headache and you pray, God, in the name of Jesus, remove this headache. But the evidence of the headache is still there. I'll tell you what you do. You let your faith exceed the evidence. Until the evidence succumbs to your faith. Did you hear me? I'm going to say that again if you missed it. You let your faith Exceed your evidence until the evidence succumbs to your faith. I don't know who I'm prophesying to today, but God is telling me to tell somebody, let your faith exceed your evidence. So many of us are talked out of what God has promised us simply because of evidence. But I'm here to let you know today that evidence is a liar. That evidence is not truth. That the faith that God has put in you and the word that God has planted in you is the thing that stands. It is the thing that holds true. It is the thing that has power. It is the thing that you can stand on. It is the thing that you can build on. It is so Somebody give God a praise. It is the power of Jesus Christ, and my faith will not wane. Give God a praise in this house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Bishop, the evidence, talk to it again. Are you hearing me? I'm preaching directly to somebody this morning. Talk to it again. Yeah, but Bishop, I've been praying for three weeks and I say, talk to it again. Slap your neighbor side the head. Say, talk to it again. Bump all this talk to the hand. You better talk to the mountain. In the name of Jesus. I will not be shaken. I will not be moved. I will not give in. I will not waver. What God says, it shall come to pass. And what God has for me, it is for me. And no devil in hell can take it. You might borrow it, but you can't take it. You might build it up for me, but it's just a matter of time that I'm coming in and I'm taking ownership of it, baby. Why? Because God said it, and I believe it, and that settles it. Somebody give God a prayer. Somebody say, speak again. Never approach your mountain with your mouth closed. You got to tell your mountain to take a jump in the lake. Huh. But you know, we're talking about true riches. But I know that there's another kind of prosperity found in the Bible. Psalms 133 verse 1 says, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. Mm -hmm. Verse 3 says, because it is there that God has commanded a blessing. Did you hear that? 
said, how good is it and how pleasant is it when brethren can come together and dwell together in unity because it is there. Somebody say there. Where? No, where? Unity. It is there that God commands a blessing. God does not bless foolishness. God does not bless gossip. God does not bless backbiting. God blesses unity. And it is there. You want the real riches of heaven? We're talking about prosperity. I told you it's much more than money. If you want the real blessing of heaven, the real manifestation of heaven, it's good and pleasing to God when we dwell together in got no time for this. Not now. There's people dying and the church is gossiping. There's people going to hell and the church is gossiping. God's sitting there saying, I want to work. I want to step in. But I've given dominion to humanity and I'm just waiting For somebody that's in the right place, that's in right standing with me, so I can infill with the true riches of heaven, so that they can go forward with boldness and with power. But I can't. Why? Because they would rather gossip than unite. Good God, in the morning I feel this this morning. I can't get any amens up in here, huh? Uh-huh. True riches we're talking about. We're talking about true prosperity. Number one, spoken word. Speak it. Number two, come together as a body. Be united as one. Because it is there that God commands a blessing. Somebody say it's there. When you get in one accord, when you get in one accord, because unity positions you for blessing. Unity positions the church for miracles. Unity positions the church for signs and wonders. Unity positions the church for power. Unity positions the church to cast out devils. It's unity that positions the church to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. It's unity. Do you know why miracles have stopped in this modern day generation? It's not because the word of God is of no effect. It's because we have lost the unity in the body of believers and God has withheld his glory and his power. Why? Because he refuses to deposit into a vessel that is not ready to handle what God has to deliver. High five somebody. Say handle your business. Handle your business. Are you ready to go deeper? I said, are you ready to go deeper? I feel like teaching up in here today. Huh? Yeah, so Genesis 1 and 28. Then God blessed them. Blessing means he released favor and prosperity upon them. Talking about Adam and Eve. Then God blessed them. He released favor and prosperity on them. And God said to them, be fruitful, which means bear fruit or be productive. Hmm. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Multiply means increase or prosper. Are you hearing me? And Fill the earth. He means occupy it. Subdue it and have dominion over it. That means rule your world. So for those of you that don't like prosperity and you don't think it's biblical, you're going to need some itch cream. When I get done breaking this down, (laughs) 
Yeah, you're gonna need some. You're gonna need some salve for this, because I'm about to break down every false teaching, every false belief that you've ever had, that you've ever experienced. Why? Because I am sick and tired of living less than what God has promised. I'm sick and tired of being less the church than God has promised or less the church than God is looking for. I am sick and tired of bottlenecking the blessing of God and the favor of God, the healing power of God. I'm just sick and tired of playing church. I don't know who I'm talking to, but church ain't cutting it for me anymore. I don't want church as usual anymore. I want the power of God to move. I need the power of God to flow. I need breakthrough and deliverance to come into this house. I need the blessing of God. I see you, girl. I need the blessing of God. See, some of you are wondering, what did Sister Dolly do? She sowed a seed in the Word. Why? Because when God gives you a Word, the greatest thing you can do is put a seed on it. How many are ready to put a seed on what God is calling you to? Listen, church, I'm tired of church as usual. That's why we can have church at Kaboto Club. Because I'm not a normal church. You're not a normal church. We're not normal. We're about to break some generational curses. We're about to take back what the devil has stolen. Y'all ain't hearing me. I'm about to get my stuff back. How many are ready to get your stuff back? I'm about to get my health back. I'm about to get my money back. I'm about to get my relationships back in the name that is above every name. I'm about, I'm getting it all back. Somebody shout, I'm getting it all back. I'm getting it all back. I'm tired of church as usual. Church as usual is done. This is becoming the new normal. This is becoming the new normal. Some of you are breaking generational curses right now by walking up here and putting a seat on it. You have no idea what God is doing with you right now. You have no idea. You're coming out of your comfort zone. This is so foreign to you. You're thinking this is crazy. Good. God wants you to do something crazy. It all changes today. Somebody say today. It all changes today. Today is my day of miracle. Today is my day of breakthrough. Today is my day of release. Today is my day of financial freedom. Today is my day that my health is restored. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice. I will be glad in it. No more normal. This is where God has taken us. This is where God has taken the city church. We're going to be that church that walks out in the community. And we speak things which are not as though they were. And people look at us and think, what manner of man is this? This is crazy. And I'm telling you, you're going to be on the forefront of it. Why? I'll tell you why. Because this word came for you. This word came for you. Do you know that this word could have been preached? In India, could have been preached in Africa, it could have been preached in Indonesia, but it, it's not. It's preached right here in the city of Windsor at the Komodo Club, and you just happen to be sitting here. Do you think it caught God off guard? Do you think you being here caught God off guard? No, no. Why? God predestined for you to be here. I don't care what circumstance got you here. God predestined for you to be here. Yeah, yeah. God called for you to be here. God is the one that woke you up and got you here. You might have thought you woke up because the alarm went off. No, God woke you up. God was your alarm that got you up and said, get on your suit, get on your tie, get on your jogging suit, whatever you got to do. Get up, get in the car, get on the bus, and get to the city church. Why? Because I have a word for you. Somebody shall release. Somebody shall release. It's coming to your house. Release is coming to your life. Release is coming into your mind. Release is coming into your finances. Release is coming into your relationship. Release is coming into your children. I want everyone to stand right now. Everybody stand right now. 
Stand in obedience to the word of God right now. Stand in obedience to the man of God right now. I want to say this. I'm speaking to somebody's children right now. <sighs> Devil, you cannot have these children. <laughs> I plead the blood of Jesus right now over every child that is represented in this house right now. You will break every demonic bondage, every demonic stronghold. You will loose them, let their mind go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak freedom right now. Every demonic spirit that has attached itself to them. I cast it down, I bind it in the name of Jesus. Whatever is bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you today. You have no power, no authority. Back up off God's property. They will live for Jesus. They will serve Jesus. They will come to the house of the Lord. They will come to salvation. They will live for you, God, all the days of their life. In Jesus' name. I just wrote a check and I cashed it in Jesus' name. Somebody say in Jesus' name. In G if you believe it, say in Jesus' name. Now give God a hand clap of praise right now. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise right now. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise right now. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise right now. Yes! I stand on the word. How many are ready to stand on the word of Jesus today? Do you receive this word today? And I said, do you receive it? Do you really receive it? He said, if you believe it, if you believe it, stop looking at the circumstance. Stop looking at the evidence. Just know that you know that you know. And hold on to what you know. And if God spoke it, it shall come to pass. I don't know how it's going to happen, but God's going to do it. I don't know when it's going to happen, but God's going to do it. And I know that he's able to do it exceeding abundantly of all that you can ask or think. I want everyone in this room to lift your hands right now. Come on, release. That was your situation. Come on, everybody, sing it. He just said, I want you to believe. I believe. No matter what the circumstance. Come on. No what the circumstance. The circumstance. I believe. Come on, say it. I believe. Yes. I believe. Come on, now shout it out. I stand on your word. I stand on your word. Come on, church. Stand on your promise. You can stand on the promise of God. shall be done. There's a TV show that says sometimes uh, you can use a lifeline and call a friend. You can phone a friend. 
When you phone a friend, that means that you need backup. Well, the Bible says that one can chase a thousand, but two can chase 10,000. If you need prayer, go to any one of the three. Two can chase 10,000. Sometimes, just sometimes, if you don't have the power by yourself to pray and, and see the breakthrough, perhaps there's more than a thousand demons that have been assigned to you. And you just need to touch and agree with somebody else because one can chase a thousand, but two, ten thousand. You just need somebody to agree with you. And as we're praying this morning, if you need prayer, I want you to come right now. Sister Eleanor, come on up and pray. Brother Gary, come on up and pray with the people. Come on. I stand on your word. Everybody say. I stand on your promise. Come on and lift your voice.